Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of Lo Kya Kenge. I'm your host Nidhi Shukla. That is very weird, very weird to say but uh, no for real. I'm your host Nidhi Shukla and I'm very excited to be starting this project. I make videos on the internet. Um, I started about six years ago at this point and my goal was to create space for the queer desi representation I would have needed growing up. Over the next month I'll be talking to some amazing South Asian creators who are either queer or allies and we'll be discussing a number of different topics. Um, if you're desi, you have heard it time and time again. Every decision comes down to but lo kya kenge, which in English translates to what will people say? So much of our culture and upbringing is based on the opinions of others. And then when we grow up, it becomes our default inner monologue before making any decision. And as an adult, you have to rewire that. So here we are. We're rewiring. And today we're talking to one of my favorite digital creators whose art has literally brought me to tears more than once. <laughs> Manasi Arya. So I came across your work in January, I think, of 2021. I saw a piece of the Powerpuff Girls and I think it was on my explore page of Instagram and I just started tearing up and I was like, I need to know more about this art and this artist and everything. So can you tell us a bit about yourself, your pronouns, what you do? Tell us about your art. Yes, absolutely. So my name is Monacy. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm currently a special education teacher and I'm also an artist. And with art, I do a lot of paintings, digital art, and they're all surrounding the theme of South Asian culture, women empowerment, beauty, fashion. And so with the Powerpuff Girls, um, I had started the childhood series like kind of um, like by the end of 2020. So my first one I had done was the Basie Lizzie, and <clears throat> I did it with one of my art friends um, so it was like such a great start for me too. And then after that, like I got a few requests and I was like, oh, okay, like I guess people want to see this from me. And also like, I love the Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls was like one of my favorites. It's been something that I love for so many years. And the childhood characters, like we all grew up with them. So kind of with like thinking about all of that, I just started my own series because it was something that I love and we all have our own interpretations of everything. So then that's kind of how that started. Um, I tried to like make it where every single one of the Powerpuff Girls was wearing a different type of like desi outfit um, and a sari. And I had never seen anyone like draw a sari on the Powerpuff Girl. And I that's why I wanted to do it and like, you know, bring a huge braid and um, just something like different, something that like really represented me and like what I loved. And so, yeah, that's kind of how that all started. I think I remember when I first saw it, I was like, okay, when I used to watch the Powerpuff Girls, I by default chose the one in a green outfit with short black hair. I was like, okay, I'm going to be her. But that was only because she was the only one with black hair. Like out of these three white cartoons, I was like, I guess I'm going to be her because that's the only one that I have something in similar with, you know? So to see the options of like, oh, all three of them kind of look like me. And I don't know if I'm being mistaken with a different piece of your art, but they all had different shades of brown as well. So I was like, oh my God, there's a variation. There isn't just like that one character that I have to associate with. Like I have options too. And there are three different people that look like me, you know? Oh my God. If I could, like, if I could see that again for the first time, I would, you know, <laughs> like it was like a really, really wonderful moment. And I, I know that it went viral and I know that you probably got a lot of love about it, but like genuinely it, it made such an impact. Just like the little things here and there that you don't realize will make such a difference in somebody's own internalized lack of representation in just cartoons. Like it starts young, you know? Did you, when you were growing up, ever feel like the, the lack of like, where am I in this media from cartoons to Disney shows to even growing up as an adult? Like what was that experience like for you? Absolutely. I think like everywhere I went, I was like, well, where like where nobody looks like me. Um, I want to look like that or like, why, why don't I get that? And honestly, like we could dress up as the characters, but like we really could, we didn't look like them because of our dark hair and our dark skin. Like it just wasn't the same. It would be amazing to see like a darker skinned, you know, they see princess and obviously we do have jasmine but like it's not the same and somehow like even for halloween when we dressed up it, it we, we, we would but it wasn't the same like it wasn't the same satisfaction and like it wasn't exciting enough and i think like you don't realize that until you grow up and then you look yeah. at how different the representation has changed and how people are actually trying to make more of a difference and an impact now and even though the childhood characters like they're so simple and like you know, we see so many interpretations of it, but like 
it, it still hits the same every time, you know? It's still like that, like, oh my gosh, like, I would yeah. have loved seeing that growing up. Um, I feel like the Jasmine thing is so relevant because when I was in the phase of like dressing up as princesses for Halloweens when I was like in elementary school, I mean, it even seeped into high school, I'm not gonna lie, but I was always Jasmine because like, I was like, okay, I have no other option. But subconsciously that puts you in such a box because you're like, this is the only person that I can associate with. You know what I mean? Like you don't realize that until you get a little bit older being like, okay, this is a box I've created for myself because I don't feel like I can actually relate to anybody else. And like my other friends would switch based on what they were feeling, based on like what outfit works for them. They would switch with the years. Like, okay, I want to be this princess this time. And I was just by default Jasmine. Cause I was like, <laughs> what other option do I have? You know, I felt especially in high school, honestly, like so isolated growing up. And I think when you come from an Indian descent and live in a North American society, it can be very difficult to figure out where you fit. Um, Cause I always felt like I was like too Indian for my friends, but too Canadian for my family. And I think a lot of that comes from media because there, they, I mean, Hollywood exists and Bollywood exists, but they don't mesh ever in the right ways. You know, I think that kind of taught me that brown people exist in white media in very specific roles like very boxed off roles you know like it's almost like a check mark to be like okay there's a brown person in here okay next you know and I don't think I fully realized the the damage that the lack of representation does until I grew up because I had a lot of subconscious thoughts and discomfort about it in elementary and high school considering all of my friends were predominantly white but I only understood how much media can dictate your understanding of yourself as a kid once I started like writing about it in college and like, you know, like we had to explore those ideas. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize how hurt I was about this, you know? So on that note, how do you feel that your work affects younger brown girls? And I say girls because predominantly your work is a lot of female cartoons, I've noticed, but just brown youth in general. I talked to my parents about like representation, talk about all those things. And I like never thought about it before, but like I realized how much like it really impacted me growing up. And so like, I really try to concentrate on like women characters and just like women empowerment because I wish I had seen that growing up. I would have felt more comfortable in my own skin if I had seen some art like that on social media, especially on social media because yeah. social media has such an impact on you. Like, especially for us when we were like, you know, like in the high school, middle school time, like we, yeah. we, we were on social media. We saw all those things on Instagram. Instagram just started rolling out. And so if I had seen that, I would have been really excited to like, and be more like in my own person, in my own culture earlier on. And obviously it's never too late, but if I could let someone else be more excited about their culture and who they are and like know that you are so beautiful because of where you come from, like that is like my mission. That is my main goal. Like, who I got chills. <laughs> <laughs> like I want you to be proud of who you are because of your identities, you know? And mm. that is so important because it took me so long to feel that way. I find your work is extra impactful because it's almost like rewriting our childhood and putting ourselves in it like it's filling in the gaps of where we didn't see ourselves and that inner child work is healing and I guess my question for you is through your art do you find that you're healing and accepting the parts of your culture that at some point maybe you rejected because I feel like that's what it does for me Yes, absolutely. I really do like to talk about just different aspects of all of that, like when it comes to like colorism or like what you're wearing or like getting married. If I had seen that growing up, right? Again, like a really beautiful dark woman on social media that was, you know, Daisy, not necessarily, you know, anything else. I, I, I would have been more comfortable and more excited about all of that. In a way, like my art is trying to like do that too, right? It's like protecting other people from feeling like this, like, like, like you're not worth it. And you like, you, yeah. you, you, know, you know what I mean? Like all that, like you're ugly because of your skin. It's just, no, it's not like that. Like you, you are beautiful because of your skin. Mm -hmm. You are beautiful because your hair is all crazy. Like it, it is yeah. all good things, you know? I can really listen. I could have this conversation forever because it's just like, like imagine being that young and seeing your artworks or like for me, seeing my channel of like somebody who's openly out, you know, like those kind of things, you have no idea the, the ways it'll affect people. Like there's an Indian version of all of, of everything. There's always space for you. There's always room for you, you know? And if there isn't, and if you find there's that divide, like you make it, you know? 
you you take the time and you figure out how to put yourself in the situation because you deserve to be wherever you want to be oh but it's just so nice like if i could go back and tell younger me that because i had no indian friends like i really just felt so isolated and like i had one indian friend then she moved away and i was like okay it's really just me now and i felt so weird about my holidays and my my food and like just the the very south asian experiences when you're living in a more american society or like canadian society you know of just like being like okay everybody else has like pizza for lunch and i am here with like rajma you know <laughs> and I'll like it's just like a very um a, like dissociating situation and you're just kind of like nobody understands and then like you don't get to be like okay but look at this person living the same life online you know like it just i feel like that would make that would have made my white friends understand it more to see it in like a media way like it would have given them a perspective and it would have been healing for me so it would have just been a win-win so thank you for doing what you do because i am sure it affects kids and it affects the adults who need to constantly put in the work to rewire that and i think it's great that you like are focusing i mean i know you're going to do all genders and everything it's on your plans but it really does help that there's a lot of women centered stuff on your page because i think you need to for me i need to keep seeing it to be like okay i belong here you know what i mean because it takes it takes a while to rewire years of like you don't fit so i don't know i really do feel like your work affects youth and adults and the inner child <laughs> and i find a lot of, a lot of comfort in this so thank you for your art i adore it i honestly think it's beautiful and very necessary you see so much negativity on social media and that yeah. sucks because like this is my art it's my happy place but then when you put it on social media and you're trying to create this like environment for other people to have a happy place like sometimes it just feels really off because like people are so negative on social media and like you feel the negative vibes from people even if they're not doing anything i had to do that for the a, a bit too and it was a little bit more difficult on youtube to to block people or like to kind of censor what they were saying but my concern wasn't as much the negative comments for me because i i don't know i just i it, it's different when it comes to sexuality like i have really gotten to that place where i'm like i don't care of other people's opinions on it because like it's not your it's not your place you know um but my main concern was if people who are in a bad situation or in a vulnerable situation see those kind of hate comments like what that can do to somebody that can really really break somebody's spirit you know and it's the same thing of like seeing like any kind of colorism or like th the hate that can happen on pages like yours and you're like no like this is a space where we are reclaiming you know <laughs> you don't get to you don't get to be negative here and I'm like it's just so strange that like it's literally shades of the same thing and got in different ways but one is accepted and one is like super not. Anyways, we're in the right direction, I hope, you know? These kind of things I find hurt less and like sting less. And I think that's because as you get older, you have to rewire these things and be like, okay, this is how society was when I was growing up. I really can't do anything about that part right now, but I can put out my art to hopefully help myself and other people move forward and see themselves. And I think that's what you're doing and it's wonderful. And I appreciate you and I don't have much else to say. Do you have anything else to say? No, this was a great conversation. These kind of conversations like really make it more exciting for me to like continue. Where can people find you? Um, can you say your handle and where, wherever, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Yes, um, on Instagram, uh, TikTok and literally everything else. It's always at Art with Monacy. It feels really nice to have met someone like you Thank who you. like appreciates and like loves so much of what I love to do too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, there needs to be a lot more South Asian content. There needs to be a lot of a lot more queer this -y content and I'm I'm here for it. I'm very much here for it. You're killing it though, honestly. Like there's always some kind of uplifting content coming up and I think that's wonderful. Yo. Thank you're you. Welcome. Oh, you're Sorry. welcome. <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, well there it is. That's the first episode of Lokia Kenge. I am so happy with how that turned out. I absolutely adore talking to Manasi. Um, and I just feel so good and wholesome after it. I hope that you do too. I hope that you're feeling like the wonderful, powerful human that you are today. And I hope that you are healing and just I'm sending you all my love. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening. And I am very excited for the next episode of Lokia Kenge with Nidhi Shakla. <laughs>